Now we're going to look at the relationship between the surah numbers and the number of verses or other relationships like that within the Quran. And we're going to start with uh, chapter 18 in the Quran, Surah 18, which is the chapter of the cave or Surah al -Gahr. And when we go into this chapter, we notice that at a certain point, the Quran starts talking about the people of the cave. And it starts here in ayah number 9. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy from this part up until ayah or verse number 25. You can do this simply by just highlighting all of these verses up to ayah 25, copying it, and then opening a Microsoft Word document and pasting it inside. Now, from this, we can delete all of the verse numbers because that's not relevant for this particular thing. That's just a, a marking that's used and is going to dis distort uh, our analysis. Once you've deleted them all and put them in separate lines, maybe change the fonts, this is what you get. Now 25 is this verse here. To know what the meaning of this verse is, let's go back to the Quran. They stayed in their cave 300 years and some add nine more. So 309. Now the interesting thing is, is if we count all of the words from the top down to this word thalath, which is beginning with 309, the tools, word count, we find that there's 309 words. Our next example is Surah al -Namid. And Surah al -Namid begins with something referred to as the broken letters. Some of the examples of where broken letters are used are Alif La Mim in Surah Al-Baqarah, which is the second surah, Kaf Ha Ya Ain Saad in Surah Maryam. Now Surah Al-Namid begins with two letters, Ta and Sin. The surah itself is surah number 27 in the Quran, and it has a total of 93 verses or 93 ayahs. Now you can go to Surah Al-Namid, and as you can see, it begins with the letters Tasin. And we're going to copy this whole surah and put it into Microsoft Word. So we do is copy and then paste it across. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to search for the letter Ta, edit, find. As you can see here, Ta has been copied in find all and you get 27 matches. Like we said, Surah 27, 27 matches. If we search for scene, and copy scene in now, again, find all, let's get rid of the marking there, find all and we get 93. So that coincides with the fact that this is Surah number 27 and there are 93 verses in there. My next example is a quick example, Surah Al-Baqarah. It's the second chapter in the Quran, which if you go to, you'll see there's 286 verses. Now, if we scroll down, if we go to verse number 143, which is halfway through the surah, this, word, this verse says that we have made you a middle nation. And it's interesting that this is in 143 of 286 verses. Our next example has a bit more to it. It's around Surah Nur, the chapter of Noah, which is Surah number 71, and there are 28 ayahs in this surah, as you can see. If we search for this word, select all, and say to search the word, as it's a noun, no roots, we get 43. So the word Nur, or Noah, is mentioned 43 times in the Quran. Now it's interesting to note that 71 minus 28 is 43 which is the number of times that Nur appears in the Qur'an. But that's not the, the only thing that is interesting about this. Look at these three numbers now, 71, 28, and 43. And let's look at this one more time. Now the other interesting thing is that, as well as Noah or Nur appearing 43 times in the Qur'an, if you go back to our search, the other thing we notice is that Nur only appears in 28 chapters. So for example here, Surah Al-Araf, it appears twice in Surah Al-Araf, but that's just, and if we go through all of the, the Surahs and count up the, the number of times and the number of chapters it comes in, it appears 28 times, 28 different Surahs or chapters. That means there are 43 Surahs before Surah Nur, which do not contain a mentioning of Nur, and there are 43 after. 
And remember, we also said that Nuh appears in the Quran as a word 43 times. So we can summarize this now by saying that the word Nuh is mentioned 43 times in the Quran. The number of surahs it's mentioned is 28 times. The number of surahs after chapter of Nuh that it does not mention Nuh is 43. The number of surahs before the chapter of Nuh that does not mention it is 43. And the number of verses in Surah Nuh are 28. The final thing to ask ourselves is whether or not there's a relationship between all the surahs and verses in the Quran. And for this we're going to go and type in Google English Quran. And when we type it, you can get a, a link to an index of the Quran. So here we have the number of the surah, the name of the surah, and the number of verses in that surah. So we can copy all of that all the way down. Once we've copied it, Control c we paste it into Excel. And now what we're going to do in examining whether or not there is a relationship, we're going to total up column A and C. So sum column A plus C. So here's very simple. Equals A plus C. And you get 8. If you copy this down, you can see that 286 plus 2 is 288. 200 plus 3 is 203. And if we copy all this all the way down, we'll have this for all the surahs. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to split out this column into even numbers or even totals. And we're going to use an if statement to do this. So if you go to the functions and click if, our logic test is if this cell is even, we want it to return that number. If it's false, we want it to say that it's not even. You press enter, obviously because 8 is even, it comes up. Now if this, this doesn't work in your spreadsheet, it's probably because you haven't installed the add-in called the analysis tool pack. So make sure you have that installed, otherwise it won't work. Now, we can now copy these down. You can see here 203 is not even. So it's given us that 203 is not even. Copying this all the way down, you get those ones that are even and those that are odd. We're now going to do a column for odd numbers, and it's the same process, the same if statement. The only difference is, is instead of saying is even, we're going to say is odd. So we type in is odd. So again, if it's true, we type in that it returns the number itself. If it's false, we return the answer not odd. So we can copy this down, and as you can see here, 203 is odd, but the remaining numbers, some are and some aren't. Our next function requires us to use this function at the bottom here, and that was originally summing up all the numbers. When we change it to count, instead of summing the numbers up, it counts the numbers, so it's saying here that there's four numbers. And if you change it to count num, it just counts the numbers. So here, for example, it didn't count the not even, it just counted those three numbers. Here, it's just counted four numbers, so it's not counted the cells with not even in them. Going all the way to the bottom, it's just counted the numbers. As you can see here, it's 57 that's counted. What's interesting is that half of 114 is 57. And so, totaling up the odd numbers, we also see that there are 57. So there are 57 even totals and 57 odd totals. What's more interesting than that, however, is if we sum our four columns. So first thing we'll do is sum column A. When we sum this column, we get 6555. When we sum column C, we get a total of 6236. Now what happens if we sum our new columns, column E, the even numbers, We get 6, 2, 3, 6, and that's exactly the same as column C. They're both total up to the same amount. If we sum column F now to see what the total is, what's surprising is it comes to 6, 5, 5, which is the total of the first column. So these two numbers are also the same. So here we have a relationship between all the verse numbers and all the chapter numbers. So just to demonstrate how this coding works, 
we're going to change some of the numbers to see what happens. Now obviously you can't change the chapter number because they're going to stay the same, but you could change the verse numbers. So you could change this odd number to say an even number by increasing it just by one. But straight away when you scroll to the bottom you see the coding no longer works. We could also change an odd number to an even number and increase it here by a bit more, so 120. But again, when you scroll down to the bottom, the coding no longer works. So there you have it. We've looked at the relationship between chapter numbers and verse numbers in the Quran, and we've looked at the repetition of certain synonyms and antonyms. I hope this presentation has encouraged you to look into the Quran in more detail and to investigate other elements of the Quran that we haven't touched upon here. I'll leave you with this video presentation, which I obtained from speed-light.info. I hope you enjoyed this presentation, and I look forward to any comments and feedback that you may have.